over the weekend I was flooded with reports that there are schools that believe they should go ahead uh, with, with, with the reopening of schools. We sensed danger and we felt that we can't just persuade the public education system, we need to also persuade the private education systems. And the reasons are simple. They're in the same communities with everyone. Their parents are going to buy textbooks. Their parents are going to buy school uniform. They're going to be up and down. It's not about the capability of an institution to manage the virus, but it's the movement. Because the virus moves through movement. <clears throat> so movements of people. So when we're flooded that there are some institutions that are reopening, uh, one Sunday newspaper ran a story about uh, the school where we are. And I just felt that, let me come and visit the school. Maybe they've got a different reasoning uh, from what we have, from experts from the Department of Health and the team that is advising the Minister of Health. So we came here, and when I arrived here, uh, as I said, I was only welcomed uh, by the uh, principal. And the principal took me through that decision, that as a leader, you revisit your own decision. Uh, because the school, was already opened by last week. Uh, so, so the reopening was not a defiance. They already opened. The decision came late. And when the information was brought to the attention by the advisor, Mr. Matthews, and our team in the province, <clears throat> yesterday they then reconsidered. And they felt that uh, they should uh, migrate to online learning. Uh, and it's only, I think you said, seven learners that are in the boarding facility that those are the seven learners that will remain purely because they need to use the gadgets and the facilities and they don't have them at home. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, 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 um, considerate to those parents. They're economically active. They want their children to get quality education. And sometimes when they're at work, they can't assist learners online or other related matters. I'm very sympathetic to that. But let's respect the views of, advice, of, of experts because if we undermine the views of experts, we are not going to go through uh, this period. So, you are damned when you do it, you are damned you are not to do it. But the consistency from the department is that we are expert driven. So when expert says move this way, we'll take that route. If experts say take this route, we'll take this route. When we opened, we had eight court cases last year that said we must close. Eight. And the courts agreed with us that on the basis of experts, the schools were safe. So now that we have closed and delayed with two weeks, we are waiting for court papers. It will definitely be those that will take us to court. It will be definitely be those parents that are disgruntled. But the reality is, the same parent that is disgruntled is the same parent that will need an hospital bed. And when they don't get that hospital bed and that oxygen, they will see the price. And we don't want to rule by fear. We want to rule on the basis of expertise. And, and on Friday, with the information we had, we made decisions that we revisited over the weekend and we changed it. We communicated very direct and very quick to our parents and we made independently the decision that we will not bring our learners back today just to make sure that the, the risks, and I don't want to expose them to anything, and we'll start with online teaching from tomorrow but I just would like to state that we were open last week and we had to readjust and make new plans.